Oh yeah. <clears throat> we live, baby. What's going on? How we doing? <laughs> what it do? How's everybody doing today? Yo, yo, what's good? How we doing? Everybody's having a good day. I know we're a little bit uh, off schedule here. I was, I was handling some very, very important uh, three-way calls. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a crazy day, man. It's been a crazy day. I didn't want to just not do it live today. I didn't want to make sure I got everything done that I needed to get done. And so, uh, what's going on, everybody? Hey, how you doing? What's going on, D? Kareem, new start. G5 Jets, what's goody? Uh, Andre, how you doing? Trey, Trey, Trey Day. Troy, what it do? Let's see. Did my other Chase cards hit your credit file yet? Chase cards, Chase. Oh yeah, you're an you're an affiliate partner, ain't you? We're in the end game now. That's what I'm talking about, man. We get that uh, <clears throat> we on that stretch, baby. Let's see. Let's see if this thing hit. So if you want to become an affiliate partner, you know, um, you just need to make sure that your trade lines are legitimate and everything. And so, you know, have you added on or have you add on to somebody's um, report? Just make sure your your you know what you're telling me that you have on your card is legitimate. That way, I can make an official partner and I can start paying you for everybody we need to add on as a authorized user. Okay, so let's see. Um, boom, boom, boom. That's not what I want to look at. <clears throat> Lee, what's going on? How you doing? So I want to check and see real quick while I have y'all here live. Let me check this live for you, uh, Miami boy. Let's check this report and see if that account is going. 305. 305 got 17 trucks. <laughs> Man, I swear. <laughs> I swear. Oh, God, boy. G. Sherman. With, coming with the facts. Relentless. What it do? All right, let's see. We got my Navy Federal, my Amex, USAA, other Navy Federal, Discover, Capital One. A city. What did you say it was? Let me make sure. You said it was a chase. Okay. City. Um, chase. I see a chase. There we go. Yep. I got it. I got it, bro. There it is. I need to notice it, actually. There you go. So, yeah, you are now uh, an official AU partner of uh, J Knows Credit. Um, so, <clears throat> you live, baby. You lost. So if you got any other credit cards, uh, Miami boy, you want to start uh, putting people on, I'll start giving you some clients here and start making you some money uh, for people who call in and want to be an affiliate partner. Sorry, who want to have a an AU. And uh, if it fits their profile, I'm going to hit you up. Let's see here. Okay. How much to remove a $36 collection and a paid collection? Sydney Slate. Um, is that all that you have? G5, need a price quote for the suite. You got to give me um, information more than that. Um, now, I need to know to, it's a pay collection, $30 collection. Okay. So, the basis of the minimum payment for a sweep is $800. Now, at some point in time, it's going to go up to minimum, it's going to be 1000 Right now, minimum is only $800 for a sweep, uh, but it might change. That might change come May 1st, um, but right now, it's only $800. Okay. Um, 
Uh, G5, as far as getting your prices concerned, you, we got to know all the details of it. Definitely call in for a consult if you haven't already, so we can do that for you. Okay, how much do you charge for funding? For funding, I charge two ninety seven up front, and then if you're talking about personal loan funding or credit card funding, two ninety seven up two ninety seven up front for a personal loan. You are paying four percent on the back end, very very low compared to a lot of people, and then you have on the back end for credit cards is seven percent. Now this might go up. A percentage point come in May, it may go up to five percent, and then eight percent on the um, on the credit card funding, just going up one percent. But uh, that's about it. Uh, what's going on, Mike Malik? How you doing? Uh, first time watch you on my fifty four inch screen. Oh man! <laughs> Hopefully you can't see my pimples and all like that, man. You know what I'm saying? I still got a high metabolism, so I still get some pimples and stuff. Okay, uh, but yeah. Uh, I have a, I guess you meant Navy Fed. Also, another Chase card. Okay. Uh, see, I thought you said AU packages will give you a better lift than uh, individual. Um, <clears throat> it all depends on your profile. That's why I'm telling everybody that it's good to get a consultation for your AUs. And people think, well, I don't need a consultation. Like, I promise you, I've saved people money by getting a consultation. So I got, I had one young cat hit me up, it's like 25 years old, wanting to get the chairman package. By the way, chairman package is $2,500, okay? And, but, you know, it can go up to 30 years of history as far as on a, on a trade line, all that kind of stuff. So he wanted to get this package. And if he wouldn't have got a consult, he could have paid for this package. And I would have added on to his credit profile when he really didn't need that. It didn't fit his profile. So he would have paid $2,500, but because he called for a consult, he only had to pay $1,400 for his packet that was going to fit his profile. So that saved him $1,100, you know, because if you're, if you pay for a, a package, I don't look at your, your credit that way. I just go ahead and just add you on to whatever you paid for. Uh, but if you get a consultation, I'm better able to tell you, okay, look, this is what you need for your profile. Let's say you've got 10 accounts and the average of all 10 of those accounts is a two year history. You're trying to get above five uh, for good credit or above nine for excellent credit. So I'm going to tell you what, you know, what's going to help you get money. You know, being above the good credit status will get you some money. Being at the excellent status will get you even more money. But I'm going to tell you what it's going to cost for both of those type of packages. So it can definitely save you money because I'm trying to get that average number of years up. And I might only need to add one or two to boost that, or I might need to add four or five to boost that based on whatever your average is or based on what, what your oldest primary is. So it's not just a one size fits all for funding or for building a profile. And people don't really, everybody doesn't really understand that. Like, Jay, you didn't get, give me your price on this. You just can't tell me this is going to help me because I had one client get mad and get mad at my assistant because my assistant was telling them that you know, what they were trying to buy may not help them. And some people are adamant on buying what they want to buy. See, I'm not going to just have you spend money on something just to get your money. That's not what my assistants do. That's not what we do. We're going to tell you, okay, look, this is what you need to get based on what your credit profile looks like. We're not going to make you. We're not going to do that. We're even going to tell you, hey, don't give us this money. Pay us this other amount of money. This is what's going to help you. Now, most companies won't do that because they're trying to look getting the big dollar amount. I'm not trying to get the big dollar amount from you. I'm trying to get what's going to help your credit profile, not what's going to help Jay knows credit only. So we need to have a win-win situation here. To have a win-win situation is by you, you know, being understanding that we're trying to help your profile, not give you a general answer. If you want a general answer, you can call any credit guy for that. You can call any credit person for that. They'll give you a general answer. They'll make you feel fantastic and sexy and beautiful and tell you all the stars, the moon is going to help and this going to get the magic is this and the credit is this. And man, you guys spend $10,000 and all that. And you do all that and then you find out you don't get that, you know what I'm saying? Or you didn't have to spend that to, to do it. So um, I'm going to give you what's what I believe is um, the best way for you to succeed with your credit. The best way for you to get funding with the AUs. I want to make sure that that's projected for you. Okay. But, um, 
Anyway, that is the to text Ashley. Um, you got some clients? Yeah, you can definitely do that as well. Hey, Jack, I called yesterday. My pops also has a bankruptcy he wants removed. He already has the money for the repo. Does removing the bankruptcy remove everything included, or is that separate, sir? So I'm trying to understand that question, Kareem, my bad. Um, Does removing the bankruptcy remove everything included, or is that separate? I'm going to give you a price based on everything total. Now, you can say you want to break it up. Um, breaking it up is not always the best thing to do because you might have to come back and do the process again, which that process is going to take uh, more effort and time, which means I got to charge you twice. I'm not trying to charge anybody twice. I don't want you to come back and say, well, Jay, I want to break it up. Because it might only cost you like $200 more to do it all together. Doing it separately might have you breaking it up and paying like $600, $600 more, $800 more than what you want to pay. So I'm not sure what price you got, Kareem, because we got a lot of calls yesterday. So I, I can't tell you, you know, exactly what was on your profile, how much that bankruptcy was and all that. But I will say if you have other things besides a bankruptcy, other things besides a repo, you want to do it all together if you can. Now. In the future, I may have a package that I break down where I can do it per bureau so people can pay per bureau. You know, I do have um, I did have uh, another uh, credit repair uh, gentleman call me, you know, real smart guy, whatever like that. And he does his as well. He has a system. He does it through. Uh, he does one bureau at a time, you know, for people who can't afford to pay um, for all three up front. He breaks it down to doing it one bureau at a time. And so, you know, I thought about that like that. That could be something that I can do as well. And I have to get that price point and things like that. So people who want to pay for it for at one bureau at a time, I can be able to perform that at some point as well. But that'll be something that might be coming in the future as I put that together. But um, as of right now, um, you know, the minimum price is $800 for whether you have one item or more. Uh, one item to five items uh, below 5k in debt, it's already 800 bucks. So you're going to go up from there depending on what you have um, <clears throat> as far as accounts, number of accounts, type of accounts, uh, bankruptcies are extra and all of that. So that's why it's important to call. It's very hard to build you a package um, without knowing what's on your credit. And some folks think they know, and find out they don't know. And that's why it's very important for us to have experience. Let me tell you why it's good to have experience. When you call, you get your service done. Let's say you want a sweep done. You want a sweep done in this month. It is now April. Now, April, we look at your credit report. We see what's on there from today, from this date. Then we can look at archive reports in the future. So let's say now it is September. And you say, well, Jay, man, you know what? I got all my stuff done, all of whatever, but you didn't remove such and such. I can look at an archive, archive report from April and see exactly what was on your report from April and say, well, sir or ma'am, this is what's on your report. Now, whatever popped up after that is not something that was covered or something that you paid for. It popped up later on within that between April and September time. So you know, it's it's very imperative for everybody to have experience. That way I can be able to go back and say, hey, maybe you didn't see this. Maybe, it, you know, you had all these updates on your credit card, maybe you missed it or whatever like that. But this was already something that popped up later on after I started your process. And so some folks are kind of, you know, missing that and not seeing that. <laughs> so I can be able to see exactly what has popped up and everything. And that way, nobody can be lied to or nothing like that or bamboozled into doing more work that that person didn't pay for. Because people are now going through credit repair, but they still have old things popping up. They still got um, a lot of bankruptcies or uh, repossessions or medical bills popping up on their credit. So that's something that I can't tell you, um, like, you know, hey, I'm sorry. But that's you didn't pay for that. It's not something you paid for. <laughs> um, but yeah, please have him call. Thank you, Kareem, for that. I appreciate that. 
And um, actually, I'll try to see if I can get my assistance. I don't know. Who'd you talk to, Chris? Did you talk to uh, Dom? Did you talk to Ashley? Who'd you talk to when you called? And I'll make sure to go ahead and give you a call back here if you're available to talk. <laughs> but G Sherman, you funny, bro. That you got me, you got me rolling right now, man. Murphy, Murphy. They want to call you Murphy Lee for some reason. I'm going back. It was a voicemail. Okay, but I gotta get pops on the line. Okay. Send me uh send a text message, uh, Kareem. And uh that way I can go ahead and have them go ahead and call you. Just say this is Kareem. Jay told me to send a text. And uh Okay, for your repo? Okay. Yeah, just uh, send a message and then um, I'll call you. Like I said, things are getting kind of crazy. All right. Topic of the day. Topic of the day. Can a 700, is a 700 credit score, does it mean that your credit's good? Does it mean that, you know, your credit, you have a good credit, you have good credit, you know, because it's 700, your credit's good. Can you buy stuff? And um, the answer to that, is no, it's not what that means. So you can have a 700 credit score and not get anything at all. You can have a 700 credit score uh, fresh out of college. You can have a 730, 740, 750 even, and still not be able to purchase or have any purchasing power. And so when I show screenshots, might have been on my Instagram, and you might have seen the 700 score, just because you see that doesn't mean that person has any buying power at that point yet. Now, they could have got some AUs to get to that 700. They could have just got their credit repaired to get to 700. But also keep in mind that repairing your credit does not automatically mean you get to 700. Repairing your credit is just repairing your credits. You can be uh, free of all negative items, all negative uh, remarks, and not be 700. You can still be in the 600s. You can be in the 500s and be free of negative remarks. Um, what's going to help you build up um, to get credit power is going to be how much history do you have. History is always going to be what's going to make or break credit, pro credit power. If you want to have the power, it's not just 700. 700, it's just something that looks good on paper. All right, let's, let's just keep it real. Having a 700 score, you look good on paper. All right, that makes you feel good as well. It makes you feel better about yourself if your credit is not four or five, you know, even 600. You get 700, it's like, oh my God, I'm at 700. Thank you, God. I got there, which is a fantastic thing, but it doesn't mean you have power yet. To get power, you got to have history. History trumps everything. And that's why there's people who have 650s but they can still buy more things than some people who have 700s. And that's only because they have the history to go along with that. Because you can have a 615 credit score just because you used a credit card and maxed it up. You had a 10K credit card, you max up to like 9,000. That can break your score down to 615. Have no negatives, have no um, inquiries. Nothing like that. It's hurting your credit. No collections, no judgments. But you went from like a 737, 787. Now you're down to 615 just based on that one credit algorithm alone. So being a 700 by itself doesn't mean that, you know, you have good credit. It does not mean that. So don't get confused about that because she's my 700 score that they can buy what they want. Because that's that's not what that equals. I just want to make sure that's clear for people who are saying like, oh, I want a 700 score. And I know what you're getting at, but I'd rather you speak things that actually give you more power. Because there's power in words, right? So I want you to say, I want to have maximum credit power. Not that I want to have a 700 score. I want maximum credit power. I want to be able to walk in anywhere and no matter what I have on, those sirs and ma'ams just start coming out. They start bringing out cappuccinos for no reason. They start going on the roof and start just dancing because you came inside their facility and they're like, man, I know this person's got great, excellent credit because they've seen you before. They've heard of you. Other banks called about you because you have that power. Not because you just have a 700 score, 
but you got the power to go along with it. So you want to go get you another apartment. You just feel like moving today. You can go just fill it out, get approved. You ain't got to pray about it. If you're going to get approved of the application fee, they will be no first and last month rent. You just got it. You want to go get you a car. You already know you make the income for the car. You ain't got to think about it and say, look, I want that car right over there. That's what I want. Go get it, pull it up, clean it up. Give me the keys. With all confidence, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Right away. We're going to go wash it for you right now. Do you want us to clean the rims? Do you want to, you know, we're going to make sure it's spotless. If it ain't spotless, you bring it back tomorrow. Drive it for two weeks. If you don't like it, bring it back. We won't charge you. You want the utmost power respect with your credit. You want the red carpet to be laid out for you. That's what I want to have for my people is that type of power. You know, and so that's what gives you that clout is that power, not the 700 alone. OK, 700 is kind of a, of a formality. <laughs> I want to say it's a formality. Um, also, even going above that, if you're trying to chase the coveted 800, please understand that once you get to a 750 FICO, you're basically at the top. Like everything else after that really is just for a personal notch up under your belt. Nothing wrong with that. But a 750, if you got 750 on FICOs, then you're at the top of the food chain. You're at the top of the food chain. Of course, getting 800s and all that, that's cool. I'm just letting you know that once you reach that pinnacle 750, or you're just like hanging above like a 767, something like that, you have the equivalent of an 800 score when it comes to credit power. Okay? So, um... Yeah, let me make sure I didn't miss any questions while I think about here things. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's see, Jay got on the live. What's up with the loans and the credit card rates? Uh, well, see, the loans is 4% credit cards, 7% on the back end as far as the rates go, if that's what you're asking. Hey, bro, I only have, uh, let's see. Hey, bro, I only have one collection in Equifax, which is $106. Should I pay it or get it deleted? Andre, do not pay that unless they're going to give you a pay for deletion. Uh, contact the creditor. Make sure you record the phone call. Get your recorder app on your phone if you don't have one. I have one. I pay $20 a year for it. Best thing. I, every company I call, no matter what I'm calling about, I record the phone call. People always have amnesia when you call back. OK, so call them, record the phone call, let them know that you're willing to pay that, but you need to get a pay for deletion letter. OK, they're not going to give you a pay for deletion letter. I would not pay it because you just have a paid collection. The only way I tell you to pay that is if you're going to buy a house and closing on your house will like part of the agreement is that you have to pay that collection off. And so you pay it. If you're not buying a house, do not pay that because it's not going to come off your credit report at all. I'm just letting you know if you want to pay it. You know, you're grown, do what you want. But if you're asking my opinion, I would not pay that unless they give you a pay for deletion letter. Now, they need to give you that letter before you pay it. Don't pay it first. Have them give you the letter saying that if such and such pays this amount of money, we will remove it off their credit report in 30 days. You see a letter in the email, then you go and you pay it or pay the person over the phone, and then that be that. So that way, if it's not removed in 30 days, which I wouldn't even wait for that, I'll go ahead and send it in to the credit bills with proof of payment that you paid them. So that way you kind of ensure that it comes off your credit in 30 days. When I have to wait for them, then when you find out 30 days later they haven't removed it, then send the letter in, just go ahead and just send the letter off immediately as soon as you pay it. So you can prove that said they said they're gonna remove it. This is from their letterhead. Email came in at 106 p.m., blah, 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 blah. You can prove that, okay? But that's just uh, my opinion. Okay. Um, no one and everyone. <laughs> uh, got advice for people who are in the 600s. Now, there could be a lot of reasons why you're in the 600s. Okay. So there's still not a one size fit all. What I would say, if you're in the 600s, you got to evaluate 
what you're being taught about utilization. Utilization, everybody talks about 30%. 30% is not where you want your credit card utilization to be. I repeat, 30% is not where you want your credit utilization to be. You want your utilization to be under 10%, preferably 1%, but uh, 9% is good. <laughs> but you don't want it to be higher than that. When it comes to reporting, you can do whatever you want throughout the month. When it reports, you want it to be 9% if you want your credit to be excellent in the credit algorithm in that portion of the algorithm. You'd have it at a 9% or, or below. 30%, you, if, if you don't believe me, this is what you do. <laughs> Look at your credit. If you're at 30% right now, let's say your score is 630. Pay it down to 9% on all your credit cards. If your score does not go up, you let me know. I will send you $50 just, just because I'm, I'm stupid. <laughs> okay? Because if that was where the pinnacle was of your credit being good, or let me say excellent, then 30% would do it across the board. 30% would be would be fine, but it's not. You want to be excellent, keep it under 10%, okay? <laughs> and I'll cash up to you real quick, a little quick cash up, okay? So if you do have some utilization on your credit cards, okay, pay them. Now, here's some things, though, that I do personally. I do this, so I'm not just telling you this for you to do it. I do this, all right? There's not, I don't know there's an official name for it. Did they make an official name for it? I'm going to give it a name. How about that? I'm going to give it a name right now, okay? I'm going to call it ghost money. Ghost money. Now, ghost money, people say, well, what's ghost money, okay? Say you got a credit card. The credit cards report on different dates. They they report on the 6th. You got one reports on the 8th, one reports on the 13th, one reports on the 21st, one reports on the 25th. All right. Today is what? The 20, 25th? 25th of the month. All right. So you got a car coming up that's going to be reporting on the third. You already made the minimum payment, but the balance on that credit card is really high. Let's say it's like 5K. So if that reports that 5K to the credit bureaus, it's going to drop your score. You may not know how much, but you know it's going to drop your score tremendously. Because you might be like a, let's say you had an 80% utilization on that card. You don't want that card to post because you're trying to get some funding or, you know, for, for a credit card. Or you're trying to go buy a car, but you can't get the car until after your payday. And that's after that date. So what you want to do, because it takes usually a maximum about 10 days for it to happen. So you want to get it done as soon as possible. So if you were to transfer that balance on that credit card to another credit card, now let's say that other credit card, you're out of the 0% balance transfer uh, window. You don't have that anymore. You have to pay a fee, maybe 3%, 5%, whatever, okay, to, ba to transfer that balance from one card to the other card, which ain't really no real money, okay? But if you move that, to that other card, when that other card cut up on the third, when it reports, it reports as a zero balance. All right? So that money doesn't exist. Now, once that next day comes, let's say it's now the fifth of the month, this other card you transfer the money to reports on the 22nd. What you do is you move that money from that card back to the other card that already reported, because they report on the third. It's now the fifth, okay? So now when the 22nd comes around, when that card reports over here, it's going to report zero balance. And then keep doing that every month to where it never reports. So you might have $5,000 of ghost money never that never hits your credit report, even though you're paying a little small transfer fee to transfer it from place to place. It'll never show up. I know folks do that with $100,000. They just float money back and forth. That way their credit stays at an excellent level, even though they got $100,000 in debt floating around, but it never reports to the credit bureaus, so nobody ever knows about it. But they always keep their maximum buying power with that. So now let's say that comes around, 
That third comes around, say you paid on the fifth. On the fifth, you apply for a new credit card because with the banks and with the credit bureau, well, sorry, not with banks, but the credit bureau, as far as reporting goes, utilization is great. You have a great utilization. So you apply for that new card that you get 0% interest for 15, 18 months with what? Free balance transfers. Oh, this is great. <laughs> and then all you do with that is just take the money from that card, transfer it to that new card that you got, which that new card is 0% interest for like 18 months, 15 months, whatever like that. And now you can just leave it on that card because now that's just, that's not gaining any interest at all. That's just sitting there and gaining no interest. You can pay that off whenever you're ready to pay it off because now you've already accomplished your goal of getting that no interest credit card. But if, I, if it was me, I would apply for more than one credit card, of course. I would apply for like 15 credit cards all in one day. Man, I get all 15. You might get out of the 15, you might get nine. You got nine credit cards. Let's say seven of them have a no interest up front. Two of them, you got to pay interest all at the same time. But they all might have free balance transfer offers on all these cards. You might have other credit cards that still have balances that are high or gaining interest. And you transfer those on to those other cards. Now you're not paying interest on those either. Or you need to float some money for another month. You can just float money around because now you got your credit cards. You're trying to get something else. You're trying to get a car next month. Float some more money around till you get your car. Float money around till you get your house. Okay? Because as long as it's not reported, it doesn't exist. So I just call that ghost money. All right. I don't know if there's a technical term for it. Y'all know I don't watch other people's crap. I don't watch other people's videos unless it's CJ. Uh, so I don't know. All right. So, so if, there's, if there's a name for it, there's a name for it. I just call it ghost money. OK. <laughs> OK, I see that. Uh... There we go. Let's see. Let's, uh... There we go. Hopefully y'all can see now. Let me get that off. <laughs> yeah, easy ghost money, man. It's like giving yourself a loan and you paying yourself back before it hits. That's exactly what you're doing. Exactly what you're doing. And like you can keep floating money around as much as you want. I mean, because every car is going to have, well, I'll say almost every car is going to have a transfer where you can do balance transfers for most of them. At least the ones that have Visa logos and stuff, they're going to have, you know, a possibility of doing a transfer with them. So um, even if it's a even if it's a high interest transfer for that balance, it's accomplishing what the goal that you wanted to accomplish. If your goal is to hide that money, you paying that little small amount of money it's not going to matter because you're doing it for a set purpose. Okay. You're doing it because you have this goal to accomplish this at that time. So you might only have to do it for a month or two to accomplish your goal. After that, you're good. You know what I'm saying? And now you have it on a 0% APR card. You might pay it down, pay it down, pay it down, pay it down, pay it down. And then let's say, say, say for example, um, eight months later, you haven't paid it all the way off yet, but you want to do something else. You want to get some other funding. Just transfer the money to another card for a month and then let it report that it has no balance and then go apply for what you got to apply for. And bam, you got money. Mm. So the key is to know your reporting date for the credit card. Yes, you need to know every single reporting date. If you don't know, I'll show you real quick. This is just an easy way to see it. Because it's just really free to do it this way. Okay. So let me show you. Let me show you real quick. Mm -hmm. Pull it up for you. Pull it up for you. So if you go to credit card utilization, if you see on your, um, on your app, right? If you look at your, um, your TransUnion, your Equifax, and your Credit Karma, right? 
you see all the credit factors. You see the hard inquiries, the derogatory marks. You know what I'm saying? You see all that stuff, right? So you're going to find where it says credit card utilization. Okay, you're going to touch on that. And then you're going to scroll up. When you scroll up, it's going to show all of your credit card accounts. Okay. Now, when it shows all of your credit card accounts, let me show you this. Let me see if I can get in the light. Y'all bear with the light. Bear with the light. Okay. So when it's showing all of your credit card accounts, it's also going to show the reporting date is on this side. Okay. Hold up. Let me see. I'm getting to that. So the reporting date is on this side here, okay? I'm sorry, somebody's outside cutting my grass. So that reporting date says, what's that? 4-3 uh, right there. So you see the reporting date? So you know you want to pay it down before 4-3. What's that? Um, oh, no, this is the... Uh, nope, that's the wrong one. This is one for... No, that's right. No, that's right. This is the right one. I'm in the right place. <clears throat> okay, so it shows you like when it was reported. Yeah, this is on Credit Karma. Yeah, this is on Credit Karma. All right. So anybody can see this. You can see what the reporting dates were are on all your cards. Now, these reporting dates are going to be different than your payment dates. You might have a payment date of, for example, 511 of next month, but it may not report to the credit bureaus until 515. So you need to make the minimum payment by 511. Sometimes you gotta make it a day before, two days before, make sure it process, whatever like that. They all have their own processing time. If you don't know your processing time for your credit card, please call them and they'll say, okay, as long as you pay us by 8 p.m. on the day that it's due, it'll process. Or they'll say, if you pay us by midnight, it'll process. Or they'll say, if you pay us by, you know, in 48 hours before the reporting date, it'll process for that date. They'll tell you that, okay, for your payment dates. But now you can make a, a payment before your payment date. Then you make another payment if you want. Just say you get some more money that you weren't expecting to get. You don't pay your credit card down before it reports. You can pay it before the reporting date. You just got to know how fast your particular bank, credit card company, actually will post what you pay. Some folks have it. Some companies have it where when you pay it, automatically it's going to do payments before it does debits and all that. So as long as you pay it before the reporting date, they'll count it. Some of them have it to where you have, they have cutoff times when you have to pay it. Okay. Uh, Lucky G. Yes, I do offer uh, AUs and um, AUs are trade lines. They're just AU trade lines. Um, so yes, I do offer I do offer AUs, okay? <clears throat> Lucky G, try to keep your uh, uh, utilization up under 20%. Really 10%. Under 10% is where you want, is where you really, really, really want to be, okay? Um, but yeah, so you can actually move it, move that money in a way to where nobody understands. <laughs> Lucky G. Lucky G got my real name. <laughs> For real, he really does. He really does. But yes, <clears throat> uh, one to nine utilization. That's exactly where you want to be. That's that. That's the move. That's the sweet spot of where you want to be. Um, you know, on those cards. Some people have credit cards right now, and you don't have no bounce at all, which is okay for about two to three cycles. But see, once you have it reporting zero to one percent. I'm sorry, not zero percent. Zero percent. For more than three cycles, it kicks it out of the algorithm. And I, 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 I'm just going to have to break it down a little bit more. But if you're not using that credit card, it's not being counted. You think, well, how is it not being counted, Jay? I have it. It's reporting. Yes, I know it's reporting, but your credit report is all about payments. They don't have a payment to count. They can't count a zero payment. Yes, you have it, but there's no payment records. You bought one thing, you paid it off back in 2018, back in March. Now it's April 2019, and you haven't bought nothing. So there's a whole year of no record of on-time payments. It might show a little green little dot 
on your thing to show that it's in good standing. But there was no payment paid for those months. So now, because there's no payment paid, it's out of the algorithm. All right. So it'll actually help your credit by actually carrying even a small balance. That's why it's very important to carry something, whether it's your Netflix bill. You might have 10 credit cards. Use one credit card for Netflix, one credit card for Hulu, one credit card for your PS4 if you're a gamer or Xbox Live, one card for, I don't know, uh, you know, your light bill, your water bill, one for your gas, your cable, your cell phone, your internet, whatever. Just put something on that card. Don't have it reporting every single month with no balance or at least buy something four times a year on that card. Every three months, put one thing on that card. If you do that, then you will automatically enter that card back into the algorithm for it to actually count that payment. And actually boost, you'll boost your credit score by going from a 0% to a 1%. I didn't say max out your car because that'll that'll break you down. Okay? But it'll actually help you a whole lot. Um, let's see. Let's see. Do I have AUs? Of course I have AUs. You just taught me a lot today, Emma. Thank you so much. Each card at 9% or lower. Yes. Exactly. No one, everyone. Is your Forex just a one-time fee of 997, uh, Steve King? Um, so it is a it is 997 per session. You only need two sessions to get everything that I teach. Now, you might go through one session. I usually don't have everybody go through one session and I go through a second one because they see the value in the first one. But when you go through one session, you can you can use that. You can trade live with that one session. I just don't tell you to do that because I want to make sure I get all of your homework from you and make sure I'm able to, you know, back test what you're doing. I need to see your homework. Your homework is important to understanding that you're listening to what I've gone over with you. And if not, we need to go back through a little refresher to make sure that you understand the first class because I care more about the success than I care about the payment because I won't allow you to pay for a second class if you ain't understanding the first class. I won't even let you pay in advance for all the sessions. You pay for one session at a time. If you pay me any more money, I will send you the money back because I'm like, I don't, I don't know. You haven't graduated from the first session to take a second session. I'm very, very strict with that kind of crap. So it's like you have to you pay for one session, you gotta get it, because I don't teach to waste my time. I teach for you to learn this stuff because I want you to be like, yo, I went, I want you to come up on another live and be like, hey, I went through Jay's Forex trading session, bro. I was nervous. I got involved. That first session was lit. I can't wait. I'm doing my homework tonight and tomorrow and the next day. I can wait to send in my homework because I'm ready to go to that next class. Then I want you to come back out that second class and be like, yo, man, I've already made 30% of my investment back my first day. From trading already. And then you come back and say, bro, I done made, you know, a thousand dollars already my first week. You know what I'm saying? If I average a thousand dollars a week, I'm making 52 grand a year from my trading. And I wasn't even trying. I was at work hitting the button, just going by exactly what he told me how to do it. And now I don't need my computer to market my phone full time. Like I made a withdrawal. I get my wife five hundred dollars cash on the bed with some flowers and crap, and she loved it. And Man, this, this is great. I want that. I care nothing about just hitting you up and doing 25 sessions and all that kind of crap. You don't need that many sessions. If anybody's telling you need that many sessions, then they're they're breaking it up so much that way they can keep getting money off you. You know, one session, two, three, four, come back 300, come back 1,000, seven. No, 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 no. You need two sessions. If you need more than that, there's something wrong with you mentally. We're just not ready to understand trading. Like it's just something's wrong. You don't need 25 sessions. You don't need a master class. You don't need to go and spend a million dollars on a seminar somewhere to get to learn how to trade. You ain't got to call these big guys who come up and say, I know Robert Kiyosaki and I know how to invest in real estate and have them teach you about money. That's not or investing or buying a house. There's other people who buy houses every day and flip houses who probably watch this channel right now 
who can teach you for a lot less, a whole lot less, you know what I'm saying? Because that big person who has that big name will not give you any one-on-one time. You're going to buy a book. You can come to one group session with a million people, and that's going to be it, you know? But, uh, yeah, that's basically how that works. Yeah, a Capital One won't increase my limit because I'm not using it. You need to use it. You got to use it. They want to see that. Uh, for the ghost money leverage, salute, Lucky. Salute, Lucky. Yeah, do that, man. Uh, and when you do it, come back and come back and say something. You know, if you do the ghost money uh, method, you know, come back and say something. Come back and say, yo, I did that ghost money, yo. I had my utilization was at 40%. I did that. Now it's at 2%. My score went up 57 points or something like that. Then I applied for another five credit cards and I got another 30,000 credit cards or something. You know, it's it's a beautiful thing. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, what's your question? Your other question, Madonna. I hope I answered your question. When does 45 days begin and end? Uh, 45 business days. Uh, 45 business days uh, begins when the credit bureaus accept your profile. So let's say you paid on March the 11th and I turned in on March the 11th. And let's say that was a Thursday. And then Friday comes. There's no official um, acceptance of your file. So, you know, the weekends, they close. So that they can't count that. Monday, they come back in the office. And then let's say Tuesday, they actually um, accept your file. So you got March 11th is when you paid. So I turned it in March 11th that night. Okay. So you got 12th weekend, 13th, 14th, 15th. Then you got 16th for that Monday. Then you got 17th on that Tuesday. Okay. So then once they accept it, because I have to go, because they have, you know, 45 days to go through the process, 45 business days, they might tell you they're going to get a response in 30 business days for any type of thing dealing with your credit. But in reality, they have up to 45 business days to make any changes or do anything on your credit profile. So they can lag it off. And uh, they can do different things to delay the process. That's how that process works. That's why I say that much time. Okay. Um, I signed up for the Jewels Club account. It's pretty cool. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, how much are the sessions? If you're talking about um, for uh, Forex, it's nine ninety seven for a session. And you're only paying for one. You're not paying for several. Uh, but the maximum that you can pay me for is two. There is no more after that. I won't do any more after that. Uh, does it begin with the first payment or the full payment? Uh, the full, like if you, if you're paying for, like I did for, uh, for you, which I don't, I don't normally do. I did it for like an end of the month thing. People pay by the 15th of the March of paying for their services. But like, let's say you're paying for a, let's say I gave you a payment option to pay for your sweep, okay? Everything is not broken up. I don't have a broken up system yet. So I don't do like Experian first, Echo Pack. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I don't have a broke up process. I do everything at the same time. So I'm not going to execute anything as far as a sweep unless it's paid in full because this is not credit repair. This is a credit sweep. So nothing gets done until it's paid in full. Nothing. I, the money will just sit in my account until it's, it's, it's paid. And whatever's sitting in my account is not like I'm holding money for you. It's not a refunded money that's sitting there. I'm letting you know that nothing's going to be done to your profile until it's paid in full. That's just going to, I'm going to sit there and look at it until it's paid in full because, you know, there's no payment plan for that. For for credit repair, yes, that's the whole process. You're paying, you're paying up front because that person is sending off letters or faxing off letters. So you're paying up front. Let's say you're paying 120 a month, right? So you're paying that 120 a month. That 120 is covering that person being able to do their letters. That's their paper. That's their ink. That's their, I guess, part of their fax machine line if they're doing faxes or if they're doing certified letters. They got to pay anywhere between 480 and seven dollars per certified letter if you know, everybody's, you know, USPS is different. So they might have to send off, you know, six letters a month on your profile. So six times $5. So what you're paying for that monthly fee is covering their expenses 
and also covering some of their time for them to make some profit off even doing the work um, to do that. That's what that's for because they're doing it every single month. So you got to keep paying every month to keep, for them to keep doing that and keep doing that work. When it comes to a suite, it ain't no, I'm just going to just write a letter, print it out, sign it, put your information in there and send it off. No, it's a whole process to where I have to be up. If I'm doing profiles, it might take me four hours to do two to three profiles. You know what I'm saying? Like four hours where I have to be on the computer. So, and then I also have to go through and do other work I have to do on the back end as well. It ain't no just one thing. So it's like, if the person's going to go through that whole process, they want to get paid for that. And um, even one of the guys I talked to today, not to put them on blast. It's not even about putting them on blast. Just letting you know that everybody doesn't charge what I charge. A lot of people charge a whole lot more than what I charge. And salute to him for people because people are paying it. You know what I'm saying? But he's charging twenty five hundred dollars per person. And I don't, I don't knock that. That twenty five hundred dollars is the minimum for a credit suite. My minimum is eight hundred. But he has a market for that. He has people who are paying for that. And that's cool. That's what he does. I know people who charge $2,500 for one AU, not for a package of five like I do. For one AU with three years of history, it's $2,500. That person's in California. That market, that's what he does. People pay it. Okay? So when people come to me complaining about prices, I'm like, bro, you really don't understand what people are charging 10 times more than me. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes more than that. Okay? But um, they know their value and they added tax. And I salute all them ninjas for what they do because that's what they do. I just don't charge that much. But at some point, I might. So right now, it's like, hey, you know, people can oh, man, I got to pay this much money. That's a lot of money. Bro, you don't know what a lot of money is yet. You don't know that people are paying 10 grand for a credit suite and they only got five negative items. They're paying 10 grand. I had a lady who called me who said she paid 10 grand five years ago for a suite. 10. No AUs, no primaries, no 10 grand up front. Had to go pull out the 401k. Okay. So, you know, but anyway, that's just real talk, man. I just want you to know about that. Um, can you move a bankruptcy is only three months old? Yes. Doesn't matter how old the bankruptcy is, we can get that out of there. That can go. Jay had a 730 with uh, cards. If you need information on that, um, I'll you know drop my number here. You can call or text this number. Uh, have you ever tried the shopping cart trick to get a new store card? Uh, Lucky, you actually read about that, the whole shopping cart trick. I read about it. Um, I haven't necessarily tried it myself, but um, <clears throat> oh, yeah. Thank you for subscribing. I appreciate y'all for subscribing. Thank you for everybody who's liking the video. Thank you for everybody who's sending out super, super chats. Uh, I appreciate super chat payments. If you don't know what that is, dollar sign there. You can hit that super chat if you like the information. If you want to send 99 cents. You want to send five dollars? Hey, salute to you. Don't want to send nothing. Just want to watch. You ain't got to send nothing. I'm just saying it's there for you if you do want to contribute to the channel. Okay. And let's see. Uh, you receive full payment on February twenty third. Okay, McDonald Grisette. Now, you pay for a credit suite. You pay for AUs and you pay for increase. Now, here's one thing that, hold up, is my battery going dead? I got 5%. Let me get my charger. All right. Now, I could put everything on your profile all at the same time. I could do your credit suite and do your increase, which I've done, and then do all your AUs that month. This is what will happen, though. So if I were to add you to an AU on the day you paid, which is February 23rd, when you paid in full, 23rd, that means that all the AUs you, you would have been added to, you would have been added in March. Okay? So let's say that your credit didn't get done, cleaned up. Let's say it took the whole, let's say it took 40 business days. 
forget everything off, right, from that date. So I'm looking at my calendar right now, and I'm, I'm going to show you why it's done this way. So that way you don't get cheated because you'll be mad. I'm, I'm about to show you, okay? So we're looking at, we're looking at the... Look at the calendar right now, okay? I want you to understand something. This, this is the calendar, right? It's the calendar. Let's go out of this calendar and look at all of the dates. Right now it's April. This is February, right? So if you were to get your AUs in February after I'm doing a sweep for you and everything else, right? Let's say, let's say it took 40 business days from the 26th. Okay, 26 when you pay, let's say everything went into the credit bureaus by let's let's let's, let's see 26, 26, 26, 26. Let's say everything went in that's the weekend. Let's say let's say the credit bureaus got everything on the 4th, okay? So that's March the 4th. So March the 4th, let's say that's when they got everything at the credit bureaus, right? Everything was accepted, your IDs were accepted for everything. Now keep in mind You've already paid for your AUs as well. Let's say I go ahead and put all the AUs on in March. Keep in mind that my AUs only last for two cycles. That's all they last for. The first reporting date, the second reporting date, and then five days after that, you're taking off. So what that means is if it's March, right now it's March. We're in March now. We're not in April. I understand we're in April for real life. So now you pay February and then got reported in March. I go ahead and put all the AUs on your account in March. April, let's say that they reported April the 11th. Okay. April the 11th, that's your second reporting date. Five days after that is April the 16th. That means all your AUs fall off. So you have no more AUs. But your credit didn't finish getting clean until. April 21st. So now you're looking at me like, yo, my AUs are closed now and my credit just got finished clean, being cleaned up. But you still want to get your AUs in it because you paid for them. But yeah, you paid for them, but I prematurely added you on to the cards before your credit was clean. Why would I do that? Would not do that. So if a person decides to pay for everything, they pay for the AUs, they pay for credit suite and everything up front. I'm not going to add you onto an AU immediately until your credit profile is clean because I want to make sure you have enough time to go get whatever you want to get in funding. So if you want credit cards, you want loans, you want whatever you want, I want to make sure that you have time to get these things. Now, if you tell me you're in a rush and you want to go ahead and get it now, that's different. You want to get it now? That's fine. But I wanted to make sure that you're not in that boat where everything comes off your credit as far as your AUs and then everything comes off credit as far as your negatives afterwards and you don't have enough time. Or you never had enough time to apply for funding. OK, I don't know if you understand what I'm just saying right now, but that's that's the process. I don't want you now. I can do that, but that'll be cheating you because. You won't have any benefits of the AUs. They'll all be showing closed on your profile. After two cycles, they're going to show closed on your profile. They're not going to be open no more. You want to apply for credit while they're open. I want to give you enough time to apply for stuff while they're actively open on your report. Okay? So you got to communicate. Let us know. Okay, now look, Jay, everything's cleaned off. OK. And of course, I got my assistant going through that, looking through that as well. But if you let me know, if you know before my assistants, they say, OK, everything's already off my credit report now. You know what I'm saying? You're like, nah, man, you know, everything's off. Let's go ahead and get those AUs on. No problem. We'll keep those AUs on for you. OK, it's not an issue. It's just that I wanted you to know that I'm not going to add them on immediately. That way you're forced out. Because once I send I send your money to an AU partner. I, they already know because I tell them they get two cycles, five days after that cycle's done, that second cycle, you take them off. Two reportings. That's it. And so I want to make sure that you know you understand that. Okay. <clears throat> but um anyway, 
4.30. Don't take all your time today. We're just now hitting an hour. This is fantastic. Ooh, increase at the same time. Why they remove me from collections. Mo, yes, I can do all that at the same time. Um, them doing your uh, other stuff is not going to prevent me from doing the removals, okay? So hit us up, send us, give us a call, send a text to that phone number right there, one eight three 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 J knows, and we can uh, get that for you as well. Uh, you can text that number as well if you like. If you don't, if you can't call right now, you can't text. If my address is already updated with the credit bureaus, do I still have to send in an ID and social security card? Uh, Lee, I always send it in. Always, always, always send it in. That way you don't have any delays. Don't wait until they tell you they need it. Go ahead and send it in proactively. Be proactive in your reporting. I'm sorry, be, be proactive in your, um, I'm guessing your goal to get stuff off your credit report. Be proactive in making sure you don't have any delays on getting disputes in. Get that dispute in, get the information in, that way your thing is already actively uh, being uh, being fought or being disputed, okay? Uh, yes, I do have a website. Um, if you haven't seen it, um, let's see. That here for you as well. Oh, uh, I forgot. Don't click on that. That's not right. <laughs> Don't do it. No. Don't do it. I forgot the credit part. That's the best thing. I need to get a jnose.com too. But um, that's the website right there, www.jnosecredit.com. Um, I don't have everything up there. Some things I just cannot put up there. But um, yes, that is the website. What creditor increases cart limits without running credit? Um, is that a bug? Oh, that's one of the little state bugs in here. Um, without running your credit, Capital One, always, they're going to do one without running your credit. Um, there are some Chase cards that will, not all of them, depends on which Chase cards you have. I'm trying to think, no... No inquiries on there. I'm trying to think. I need to make a video on that actually. Which ones will not pull it? Because I know that a lot of times they do it by state, but there are some that do it generally across the board, no matter what it is. I know that um, Navy doesn't give me an inquiry, Navy Federal. I'm trying to think, does Discover give me an inquiry? Discover did. They gave me a free increase, but then I asked for more money. I think they did give me a, they did give me an inquiry. But actually, I'll, I'll make sure I make that happen. I'll look at that. That's a, that's actually a good video to make. Uh, so I'll do some research on that to know uh, officially on every one, at least all the major ones, at least. Um, I like to call companies, just ask them questions, and just be grilling them. Like, do y'all do this? Y'all do that? And I like to record the phone calls. Y'all know I record phone calls all the time. So if anything happens, I'm be like, yo, I called this person. This is their customer ID number and all that. They told me I didn't have an inquiry. And so I'm not supposed to have no inquiries. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. And that shows best to have the AUs added after the sweep. That's the only way you can benefit from the AUs. Exactly. You want to have them added afterwards. I want to make sure that you're getting the, at least having the most time to, you know, for it to work. Now I can add them. They can boost your score. Now you can get AUs added on. Let's say you're trying to buy a house. You're trying to get your score bumped up. I'll give you AUs all day. If you call me for AUs and your credit's jacked up and you're not buying a house, I will grill you before I give you one. I will grill you so hard. Like, why do you want an AU? What are you trying to buy? What's your goal for this? What are you doing? And you tell me some stupid stuff. Are you trying to apply for something? I'm going to say, no, I ain't got no AUs for you. I ain't got no AUs for you because it's not going to work because you're not going to be able to bad mouth me and say, I bought these AUs from Jay. They hit my credit report. He said they're going to help me get funding and I ain't getting none. Not going to do it. Nope. Nope. Because your, your credit ain't even clean. Why are you buying AUs for? What are you doing? Why? I understand if you're buying them while you're getting your credit clean, you're buying them right now 
maybe you're buying them at a special price, something like that, while the, while the prices are lower or you're just getting done at the same time. You just want to get the money out your hands. Cool. No problem because you're going through the process. But if you're not, you're kind of putting the cart before the horse. You don't need AUs first and then clean your credit later when you get in a better position. No. Go ahead and clean your credit now and to help you get in a better position. Okay? It's the only time you want to do that. Relentless. Another one. <laughs> Chase has that silly 524 uh, rule. I don't do Chase cards. Um, I don't even own a Chase card. I have Chase AUs, but me personally, I don't want a Chase card. I just don't want one. I don't like being told what to do. Now, their business credit cards don't have that same rule. So I am going to get their business card. But a personal card with Chase, don't want it. Because you're not going to be sitting here having me have a credit card. Then I go somewhere and try to swipe my card and come and find my card is closed because I have too many accounts. I'm going to be pissed. Mm -mm, I ain't messing with them. I like the companies who let me get as many cards as I want to get. And they don't care as long as I pay my bill for, with them. That's why I don't mess with Chase. Okay? Uh, I don't know. The package is file fit. My file, I have nothing on it but five primaries that I've had for six months, and I'm 30 years old. Uh, see, 30, 12. Nope, you wouldn't need that Lee Green. You probably want to get the package that's about 1800 1800 that dollar, that package. I think that's a CFO package. That's the package you need. Don't get that package. That don't fit you. You'd be wasting your money. Hi, Jay. Did you get my email regarding your client posting to my card? Uh, thanks, Tim. Oh, yes. Um, yes. Uh, one of my clients did post to your card. Tim is one of my AU partners. Um, yes, that that person did post already. I hear you. That's what's up. On a side note, Jay, do you offer help with getting out of check systems? Lucky G. Yes, I have a check systems process as well. I can remove you from check systems. It is $700 to get you out of check systems. Whenever you're ready, just let me know. And uh, I will post my number here one more time. <laughs> bless up. Bless up. Appreciate that, Relentless. Um, if you haven't followed Relentless on um, YouTube, make sure you go hit Relentless with a subscribe button on his page. Just because, like, if you knew this guy, man, like, I had no idea who Relentless was uh, until he sent me a link on his YouTube, man. It's, it's like, his, his story is powerful. Powerful brother right there. Definitely a king. And uh, when you watch, when you watch the video that he has up there, man, like, this guy's world renowned like best selling offer number one like like no no not even trying to flex for him like that but you know real cool down to earth brother um definitely salute to this dude but uh relentless relentless search for relentless aaron on uh on youtube i promise you that dude right there is is, is powerful brother man powerful brother um but yeah relentless we gotta do your funding man we gotta do your funding uh, actually, call me after this. We got to finish your funding, bro. We're going to get you some funding. Being that I did not send in my ID and social security, should I go ahead and send it now before they can write me back or just wait for them to respond after my disputes? Um, because you already sent it in, I would just let it go. I would let it go if you already sent it in. Did you fax it in or mail it in? Uh, Tim, I'll give you a call tonight, man. I'll give you a call tonight if you're going to be up a little while. Uh, I'll give you a call myself. I'll actually make my assistant make a note of that to uh, give you a call that way because she reminds me of everything. That way I do not forget or get busy. But, uh, yeah, I'm not going to hold y'all up. Thank y'all for watching. I'll be back tomorrow. With another video. Um, Jay knows credit. Favorite guy in the hoodie, or at least he's trying to be. Everybody gets what they want to get out of life. Hope you get your credit together. Even if it's not through me, I want you to succeed with your credit and utilize it. Make sure you make wealth off of it, not just make debt. God bless y'all. God bless y'all finances. Jay's out.